and process. All right, good morning, everybody, to day three of the USAS overview. Today, we're going to talk about the receipts and the refund processing in USAS. So, first, find where you can find like that PowerPoint and this recording later on the wiki page under the meetings and trainings. <clears throat> There's a section ITC overview training. And you can see last week's is here. Ours is right here. We'll have the link here. And then next week after this week is completed, we'll have it like updated like this with chapters. So for instance, if you click on the requisition, it'll take you right to the Zoom portion of the recorded video on requisitions. So you can come back to here and view them as well. Please ask any questions if you're thinking about it, somebody else's as well. So let's talk about a receipt. A receipt is, the, or the receipt process is where the user actually records or posts the monies received for the district. And it gets recorded to a revenue account, which Amanda talked about on Wednesday. The, the account structure is as such, with this part being the receipt indicator, I guess, the receipt dimension of the account code which is assigned by the Auditor of State, and you can find these in that manual. The receipt code is defined by the source, whether it's local funds, state funds, or federal funds for which they are received and the purpose for which they serve. So what does that all mean? But before we go to the manual, just to show you what it means, the transaction indicator is 03, and Amanda also talked about what that was behind the scenes, but it part of the account code. So let's go take a peek at that, that manual. Here's those transaction indicators showing that receipts are 03. But Remember the uh, the definition was from defined by the source and for the purpose. So the source is like local sources. Um, state sources with three hundreds before it was one hundred one thousands. Sorry, it's early versus 3000s for state and so forth. And then from that, it goes into the purpose and it's easier to show you with um, like the cafeteria fund. Sorry, I am so for scrolling. I'm trying to find what I was trying to show you. Anyway, it's broken down further into the purpose transportation fees, food services. That's what I was looking for. So the purpose is food services. So that's how the account structure is. But in USAS, you'll find them under the core revenue accounts. And like all grids, you can customize them to the view that you want. And here's the receipt codes. Now, what I wanted to point out here before we get into like creating a, a receipt is that with even with an expenditure account, which I didn't show yesterday, but you can do it, you can attach XREF codes, which is a cross reference code. So, for instance, I'm going to sort this to the top or so that they all show at the top. You could um, associate this milk code which remember 1514 in the manual, 1514 is sales of milk to students. So there's the reference back and forth. Um, but 
like your cafeteria secretaries may not know these codes. You don't really know them until you use them. So you can attach like a cross-reference code. So as they may, if they re, uh, process a receipt, they can just enter milk for the account code and it'll pull in that account. And I will show you an example of that later, but I wanted to point out that it's on the revenue account in my example, but it can also be attached to the revenue account to be used like the same purpose. Let's go into one just to show you right here. And I'm not sure if I showed you on the revenue one, but it's the same kind of field. Right there. All right, so again, I'm demo demonstrating in the admin user, which uh, individual user receipt processing, processing per district can be different because it can be controlled by a variety of variables. Districts can have different rules. Um, I point out some that can be enabled or not versus the default today. Um, the permissions and their roles per district as well as account filters could be different. So again, I'm going to demo as the administrator so that we can see all aspects. <clears throat> so you can create the receipt from the transaction menu under transaction receipts. And again, you cannot create or edit a transaction unless it's an open period. This indicates the current period. But you can see, and this might be unusual, but this is a demo account. If it was my district, I would have all these closed up until February. So in that case, if February was closed and I was trying to uh, create a receipt, I could not do it because February posting period was closed. So I'm gonna create a receipt by clicking on the create button. These are similar to what you find on other transactions. If you click on here, once you populate the receipt that you're entering and you click save, it'll populate this blank screen again so you can continually enter your receipts. If you just have this check mark close, as soon as you enter this receipt, and click save, it'll close this window. If you pick neither and you click save, you're gonna have to physically come over here and X out of it, which is no big deal, but I just wanted to point all those options out. We're gonna click close. This receipt number, oops. You can enter the receipt number or you can auto populate. And that's based on that system configuration under, or transaction configuration under system configuration. The date is, the date is gonna default for today, but you can change it by choosing the date with the icon. You can put as many details here as you would like. Um, I don't know, parents of the boosters. Description, we're gonna make it a donation, but neither of these I believe are limited to the number of characters that you can use. These grayed out fields are gonna automatically populate with the total and the created date, and that's why they're kind of grayed out. This is the add a line item to the receipt. So we're gonna say, we got donations from the today's basketball game. You can choose your type because when you're 
the process of recording a receipt and use as can create a receipt, which is indicated as an RC, or a reduction of expenditure, which is indicated by type RX. The receipt is a posting of the monies to the revenue account, whereas the reduction of, sorry, I was moving my notes around. The reduction of expenditure is like reducing a posted expenditure. And I'll give you an example of that. But when you are using a reduction of expenditure, you're gonna use an expenditure account because you're reducing the expenditure. Right now, we're just gonna create a receipt. And then we're gonna... So you can continually add by clicking. You can also delete that line. It asks you for the, the confirmation. This little icon, and you see how as you hover, you can see the little tool tips and you can either add an item here or here, which is gonna be the same thing. This is gonna copy the item. So then you could update it to the March 10th basketball game where they only got $10. Um, I just wanted a third example in here. So I could show you, this will move up the line, but I wanted you, you to be aware of it, that it'll move it up. But then you have to move up here to, if you want to move it up to the top. It's not, you're not going to just keep clicking this one. I don't know how to explain it, but this one moves up the line and this one moves down. This, we forgot to talk about, this will help you search for the account. So you know it's in the cafeteria fund. We just don't know which. This is where you can also use the word milk and it pulls up that account. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was uh, formatted, if it had, you know, before it wasn't capitalized. So it looks like it works both ways. So once you click on, once you search on any of these things, if you click on that line, it does populate a line, that, or it populates the count into your receipt. Uh, we're gonna save. If you need to edit a receipt, you can do so. Again, it must be in an open posting period to edit and modify. Since we just created it, we can modify it, say we got the date wrong or whatever. You see how it auto-populated. The receipt number can be changed, but there is a rule that you can customize for the districts if they want to prevent that. Because if you save this, it will. This is where the error is set, where the receipt number cannot be changed. And I know there's a lot of rules and stuff to know. I'm gonna show you an easy searching thing. So under system rules, you wanna know all the rules that are enabled and even mandatory or not mandatory, but you don't know what you're looking for, oops, or you don't know the name of the rule, you can go over here and search like receipt. And it'll show you all the warnings and errors that are out there. The only, you can't change the mandatory rule, but you can change the false rules, <laughs> the mandatory false 
rules that are set. So like this one is enabled as true. And that's why we saw that error. So that's just a tip on how to find the rules related to the transactions that you may be working with. Okay, so going back to the receipts grid. You can delete a rec, uh, receipt in the open posting period. And I'm gonna go into, sorry, I meant to, there we go. If you view a receipt, you have options to edit, clone, and reverse. So you can edit. February is open in this demo demonstration instance. You can only the fields that are allowed, but you can add another line. Say you got you forgot to post this one. You can, once you're under the view, you can clone this because you're gonna always have the grant project cash receipts every month if you're submitting your expenses every month. So you can just update with the date again, will populate with today and you can update your description or your amounts every month. You can also reverse. Uh, it'll, let's do this. You see that it's a February 27th receipt. If you reverse it, it is going to default to today's date. You decide you don't want to reverse it, you return with the back button. But I'm just going to generate the reverse receipt. And you can see that it successfully created the negative in total of the original receipt. You can't Um, I believe that was the original, let's see. It'll mark it reversal of receipt. To print receipts, like any grid, um, you would choose all or several, one or several, choose this. Your print options comes up with the XML file or the PDF. I talked a little bit yesterday about the PDF customized forms. You can see here that I have two customized forms in the system. One has a receipt with a logo and then another customized form that just says reduction of expenditure. Uh, in the PowerPoint, there is that link to how to customize or creating customized forms. But if you have any issues, you can just reach out in a support ticket. This was an example of the reduction of expenditure. And then the school logo with the receipt. The logos are really kind of easy. You just insert it into the header of the Word document. So let me see what I chose. just a simple receipt. So I'm going to print one of those customized. First, I'll do it the default. Just a simple receipt. Versus customized one with a logo. Same thing, but you can customize other fields. I just wanted to give you that example. Uh, so I said that you could create a reduction of expenditure on the same receipt posting as the receipt. So how do you find these reductions of expenditures from this grid if you're looking for one? You can set up an advanced query. 
I click on this button. You can set it up or you can just use it once. I actually have it set up. You go under the items to find the type. The type of transaction is the receipt RC or the reduction of expenditure RX. So I, I chose type, moved it over, equals RX. And then I named it, saved it, and that's why I have it under here. So like I did, I just came in here, loaded my saved one, I can apply it, and there's my um, reduction of expenditures. So for, oops. It does have a receipt number, and it, if it's auto-populated, it will auto-populate to the next receipt number. Let me make this a little bit darker. You can see that it's the, R, the reduction of expenditure type with the expenditure account. So that's how you would easily find, if you need to find, what, what reduction of expenditures are included in what receipt numbers. You can also, this will clear the query if you wanted to start over. And this actually hides and closes that top portion. So you also see that there is a import button on this grid where you can import receipts um, via the CSV file. This might be helpful for those high school secretaries or maybe the cafeteria secretary that is entering receipts and submitting it on a spreadsheet to the treasurer's office, for instance. And again, remember you can use um, the XREF cross-reference code. So the secretary doesn't really need to know the account code, which sometimes is the hard part. Just trying to get to the manual. So under the um or in the manual, oops, I made that too big. You can see there's a section import receipts and the receipt criteria. And you can we have a spreadsheet as well as the required fields. I believe I had one in. Here we go. This is highlighted with what I wanted to show you. So the I took the template that was available in the in the documentation and it has the top row formatted. But if you leave this column blank, it will be um, auto populated. You fill in the date of the receipt that you want. This indicates the line number. So each one of these are going to be a separate receipt. Um, I did forget to mention that you, the USAS standard role can utilize this function. You see the RX reduction of expenditure transaction with the expenditure account. So if you're using that type in that column to import, you must, of course, use that just like entry. Um, you can look, and then when the secretary that doesn't know the account code uses those cross reference codes like milk, it will populate when the treasurer's office or whoever imports it into the receipt program of USAS. And I will do this, but you can't highlight a CSV file. So this is why this slide is good. You'll notice once we import it that this little Cafe special character is going to show differently, as well as commas in um, CSV files. Commas, uh, when they're imported on a CSV file, they get wrapped in quotes. So that'll be an example, too. All right. So. 
Let's import that file. You click that button and choose your file. It loads and then as soon as I click this, it'll give you not only a file, but the number of successful and un, like we got eight records loaded, zero errors. Now, if it did have an error, whether or not it does, it does create this USAS load error. But of course, without errors, it's gonna be blank as we'll see in a minute. If it, if it did have an error, it would be indicated over here. So let's look at those ones that are that were imported, like with the comma. You see here, it got wrapped in quotes because of that little comma. You see here on that cafe special character, it did something with that character, just so you're aware of that. And one of them had milk. Let's see. Was it that one? No, but that was another uh, XREF was breakfast milk. See how it posted it to the correct account. So that's a very handy tool. Um, let's see. Again, on the grids, you can like customize your grid with information that you want to see and then create a report of it. And when you do, there are different options as far as formats and orientation and page. But I wanted to give you another example with advanced query, like finding a donation in the general fund. You know, there's not really I don't know how much information is under the more button, but you can see not as much like the account code I don't see. However, if you go under the advanced query, you have so many more options. So if I were to, here's the example. You would create, you would pull in the fund, because you know it's in the general fund, or that's what I'm looking for. And I've instructed everybody who enters a receipt that if it is a donation, that it says donation. So that's what I'm going to look for. And then of course, I if I need the date range, Greater than seven one twenty. Oops. You know what? I forgot I had one saved already. That's how you create it. This is the one that I had saved. The description contains donation greater or equal to the beginning of the fiscal year for the fund of 001. And this is exactly why you save it, because you saw me struggling creating it. And it's just because we haven't had enough coffee on the time chain. But it's saved, so why recreate it? And that's the purpose of saving it and using it. So once you apply it, there's all my donations with the word donation in there somewhere. So other ways that you can get results besides the grid and the report button would be the template reports.
You can see the receipt ledger report, the receipt listing. There's even a reduction of expenditure ledger report. And then we'll look at refunds next. But again, under the help button, there are shared reports in the public use as reports library. So for example, again, it's um, organized by account based, sorry for the scroll, budgeting, and then transactions. And somebody created and put one out here that is I'm looking for it. Receipt listing sorted by fund, special cost center, or the receipt ledger report that includes the reduction of expenditures. And again, they have an example. So if you did import this report definition into your report manager grid, you would be able to generate this report with the RX and RC transactions all on one report. Uh, I also wanted to point out too, because you see these dates, it's generated, the reporting, the current period was obviously December, 2021 when this report was, when there was the report was generated, that was the period that was open in the system, even though it was created on this date. But because it's a transaction report, the posting periods don't have to be open because you're just pulling transaction information with a range of dates. So that's one option. There was also another one, I guess those two, with a description and you would download this. And then in your report manager, this is where you would import the report as well as creating that form that we talked about for the electronic disbursement. You would just upload your document here. And that's how that electronic disbursement form, instead of the default, became available. But to import that report definition, you would find it where you saved it on your computer and it would then become available on this menu. So the effects on the accounts, receipts actually increase the amounts received on the revenue account. So as you get money in, I'm gonna pull up a account. I don't know which account has funds right now, but as you post receipts, your amount received is going to increase. If you have a reduction of expenditure on that receipt, this is going to open up the availability of funds on that expenditure account because you're reversing that expenditure cost, basically. So we have an example with screenshots. And I kind of inaccurately put PO over here. It's actually the disbursement. This is a financial detail report that this PO did have three disbursements for these amounts. And you can see that on the financial detail, it shows expended because it's a disbursement from the peak purchase order. When the user posts the receipt with the RC code, you can see it comes into the received column. When the user posts a reduction of expenditure like this one, again, you use the expenditure account because you're reducing that expenditure account. So those funds become more, they become available for another purpose. And you see here where it decreases the amount expended. 
I thought that might show how its effect on the account. Any questions on that? Or anything about receipts? Think. Yeah, the next thing is refunds. Refunds are monies being returned that was already receded into the system. So the parents already paid for that science class fee, but the kid dropped out. So you need to process a refund. So that's a transaction too. So it's found under the, under the transaction menu. And again, it must be in a open posting period to create or edit because you're changing that transaction. In the old days, you'd be erasing it with the pencil. So of course that book or that ledger had to be open to erase it. Um, refunds. Again, there's so many different variables per district, count filters, user roles, users roles and district rules. And, but by default, the vendor and account must be active when you're creating it. But that's another rule that can be customized by the district. You can enter a refund number or let it auto populate based on the transaction configuration under the system configuration menu. You see these create new close buttons again. So upon closing this refund, it'll create a new one. Or upon closing, it'll close this window. Or you have to exit out in this case. It will default to the current date, if you don't have April open, but you wanted to post an April receipt, April has to be open. It has to be an open posting period. Refunded to, I'm just going to put Mickey Mouse. I don't know why I'm refunding it for cheese. We'll make it fun. This will be uh, checked if it's voided. The system will check it if it's voided. This will populate by the user that is creating it, which in this case is the admin user. Excuse me. If you want to check, create a check for that parent, you would choose this. Again, it defaults to the check date, but you can make it 31st date. You can change it by entry or by this calendar. You can choose your bank account if you have more than one. Now, if you were to choose, you have to choose a vendor here. So I don't even know what vendor I planned on using. So we'll do Carla Parker. And you noticed I before I choose that, I had it refunded to Mickey Mouse, but as soon as you choose the vendor, it's gonna change it because you're creating a check. The check number once it's assigned under the disbursement grid will populate. And again, you can add your items. And your Revenue account, excuse me. You have similar buttons moving up and down, copy, add item, delete. Since I didn't have anything checked here, I have to close this, but it would be like viewing this, I have these options now. 
So if I decided to edit, I really don't have that many fields to be able to edit. I can only edit the refund number and the date. Oh, and the description. Okay, so I want to put moldy cheese. I wanted to clone because I had moldy meatballs. So I want that refund too. Click close because I'm done now. It'll auto populate the number. And we'll have two refunds process, Carla, by cloning and editing. <clears throat> so you see the two refunds that you can print. I don't know if I hit, okay. You can also customize this PDF form too, but obviously I don't have one in this instance. But to get the check, you do have to go to the disbursement grid. So here's your refund piece of paper. Now, if you go to the disbursement grid, You see the two refunds, you choose them and generate your print file. I believe I've seen a district also have a refund check form, but it, I'm not sure if it, what it included as far as the customization, maybe their logo, I don't remember. So there's your PDF version of that refund that now has the check numbers assigned to it. So you need to uh, avoid a refund. If you need to avoid a refund, refund without a check, then you can go to the refund grid and as long as it's an open period, you're allowed to delete. So it looks like this one's available because I believe all the posting periods were open since September in this instance. So, and this doesn't have the check number. So we're gonna, oops, I went, I'm gonna delete it. It gives you the confirmation. Now, once you delete it, uh, it's not going to show on transaction reports. And I'll show you an example of this. And this is only not going to show on transaction reports without a check. To delete a refund that has a check, like the one that we just created, you, you can't delete it here because it's, it's not just a refund now, it's a disbursement. So if you need to delete Re or reverse or do whatever with this refund check, you have to go to the disbursement grid. Find that one that you want to reverse and void it. This will reverse the refund. Let me make sure I remember which. Well, I'll know. Void that check with today's date. And confirm. Now looking at the refund grid, you will see that this one's avoided true. And when you view that, Remember I said, I guess I didn't make it darker, but you can see that check mark kind of right here voided. It automatically check marked. You can see it automatically filled in the check number. 
Um, this reference number is probably the disbursement number. And it did up auto populated the refund number when we created that. So when a refund is attached to a check, those transactions will show on the revenue account history or the transactions. So I do have an example. I think it was on slide. Right here. So I had, this is a screenshot of two refunds that I processed. The one refund is a $50 check or $50 refund that was processed with a check and a $70 refund that was processed without a check. And then without a check, we simply voided the refund under the refund grid. The one with the check, we went to the disbursement grid, avoid the check, which automatically reversed the refund. So after that, oops, after that was done, you can see that, like here's the, revenue account activity report with the two refunds processed. Then we went and deleted and voided the disbursement. And you can see down here that that $70 refund without a check no longer shows on the account. The only transactions that will show on the transaction history will be the ones that are attached to the disbursement check. And hopefully that example show, showed what I was trying to say. Does any of it, anybody have questions on that? All right, so finding um, refunds with check, you would make sure this column is on your grid and you can filter. And then under your more button, Sorry, I got lost in my notes. You can make a report from the grid's results or on reports such as the disbursement detail or the template reports. You can filter by the refund types on the reports and just get um, like the financial detail with refunds or something. But we do have the refund ledger report available in the template reports. We also have the disbursement detail and summary, which again, you can filter by the refund, refund type if you want those included on the reports or only included on those reports. So the type, I think that's all I have on refunds and receipts. However, I did want to go to the documentation to also point out, besides our manual chapters are similar to our USAS menus, under the appendix, we kind of did the same thing with the frequently asked questions. So we have like information on the counts, requisitions, the stuff we talked about yesterday. 
and then receipts and refunds and the possible questions like how do I reverse a, or delete a refund? How do I create a refund check? So I wanted to point that out. Um, we do have general procedures out there, like receipt and refund processing, very basic. Enter a receipt, clone a receipt. But that is all I have. I appreciate you guys all um, joining us for the last three days. Does anybody have questions? Or how something would relate to another? Okay, we'll have this recording as well as the other ones posted out on our wiki um, meetings and trainings page. And thank you. Happy St. Patrick's Day and have a great day.